Hello and welcome to the Apex Racing TV eSports studio and our coverage of the Apex Racing Academy Porsche Cup. Tonight we head to Zolder for round five of what has already been a very exciting championship. My name is Sam Fitzpatrick, I have alongside me David Sampson. We'll be bringing you the action this evening. And David, we go to one of the oldest circuits, Freedom on iRacing. This scan is over 10 years old already, and uh, but one that I think we both enjoy in the form of Zolder. We do. We've both done the 23-hour endurance. Different times, unfortunately. Uh, it's a demanding track. It is tricky. I mean, we'll go through the corners in a bit, but a, a challenging track, a rewarding track, but not a track I think most of the drivers are going to have a huge uh, experience level at. So I think it's going to create some great racing, especially in the, uh, the chicanes. Definitely, yeah, that is one of the biggest challenges of this circuit, along with, of course, the grass and the gravel, which lines every inch of the perimeter of this circuit. That's a reminder, of course, of the car that we have over 500 brick horsepower in this Porsche 911 GT3 Cup 992 edition. And of course, we will once again be using the uh, A format with the two heats, the B final and the A final tonight as well. So, uh, yeah, we'll be seeing plenty of the car tonight. And uh, a reminder as well of the calendar last time out visiting VIR with the same format. And uh, I think it was a pretty good round of VIR and a very competitive one as well it seemed like the race leader never had more than about a second advantage yeah agreed very tough uh, very demanding as we ex suspected for VIR I think it's gonna be much the same as older especially I only just found out now it's the heat format my favorite format especially for this car I think yeah. it just creates that close tense racing uh, keeps it from ever getting boring um but yeah no very excited I'd say it is a demanding track it's gonna require a lot of the drivers I mean every corner on this circuit I can't think of an easy one yeah. Um, it just takes a lot, so very excited. We are using the endurance format next week, so make Ooh. the most of this. Okay. Before potentially falling asleep next week. Road America, though, isn't it? So I'll Road take America, it. yeah, it's a good, it's a good pick for the endurance layout. Um, also, a reminder as well of uh, a new championship that is starting up on Apex Racing TV. There's Apex Racing League Sports Cars. You have got three days to sign up it starts on monday there are i think seven i think maybe actually six slots left in the uh tcr category so gt4s are filled we've got 35 gt4s but there are still a few spaces left in the tcrs already 20 i think signed up so i think it's another five which are available so That's if awesome. you're interested do go to apexracingleague.com you're not going to get a better place to race tcrs in a multi-class league um it should be a lot of fun just seven rounds as well it'll be over unfortunately before we know it but uh it will be very fun whilst it lasts so uh yeah do check out apexracingleague.com for that um let's have a mind as well of the points going into this round and it's it's changed hands so many different times and it's now uh alexander who's in the lead yeah um it's been it's gonna be tight i think for a long time uh there's been no no runaway in this um no. it's been very tight very competitive and the the heat format just keeps us guessing on uh, who can do what uh i've been really enjoying it but as for who's gonna run away with it i have no idea and when it comes to the job scores as well, there's other drivers who will come into play. I mean, Corey Lazarus is the one that comes to yeah. mind. Mateus Jumeir as well. They're both missed rounds, so that's why they're outside the top five. But you take away their worst score, and they're probably up maybe even at the top of the championship. So uh, there's still you know up to 10 drivers who have got a chance at the title. In the AM Championship, uh, Ben Pedersen really has been the dominant force and there's been a couple of rounds this season where it feels like he could have done a little bit better. I mean, certainly Red, Red Atlanta was that case. He really did deliver last time out of VIR and he's now nearly 50 points clear. He's looking pretty scary at the top there. Yeah, he's fast. Uh, one of those who could hold his own in pro, I imagine. I imagine he wouldn't be doing too bad if he was in the pro category right now. Yeah, like, I well, we, we can figure this out because the point system is for your overall points. So, at the moment, uh, Shaye? Shaye. Shaye. Uh, he was taunting me earlier on on Discord, actually, it was Shaye, saying, say my name, Sam. I'm like, I was <laughs> looking forward to this, uh, and now I'm not. Uh, Pedersen, uh, 372. So, Pedersen would be 
fifth yeah. in the pros at the moment. And you know, if he'd done better at Road Atlanta, if he didn't have that awful last half, he would be second. So uh, he's been very, very good so far this season. We might have team points as well um, that we can show you. North Sim Racing still at the top. Uh, Sim Race Sweden, to be fair, lost most of those points that you see there in the first two rounds. Since then, they've been a bit more on it. On it. Bremer in particular, I think, has had some good results. So maybe it's a still alive, and even THR Sim Sports aren't that far back. Yeah, obviously North came out the bo uh, box swinging, though. Uh, that's a, that is still quite a points tally they've already built up. So, uh, yeah, I think it's theirs to lose. But, yeah, still many, many rounds to go. Yes. Uh, welcome to, speaking of THR, welcome to Nick Horn in chat. Welcome to uh, oh, Alvio as well. Very good to see you both, Nick. Uh, really, Nick, Nick, Nick does go on about how little practice he's got. Um, last time out, he was actually more competitive than uh, than we've seen him in the past. So maybe the lack of practice uh, does he well, um, uh, Nick, on that one. We'll see how he gets on and practice fairly soon. Uh, but uh, yeah, let's have a reminder as well of the, the track as well. Um, uh, Favourite corner, I suppose? Uh, <laughs> um, you gotta get say one of them. Probably which, the it's probably the last chicane. I mean, this track is. I mean, uh, it, is it an odd one that we both like it, and yet I don't think we can name a corner that we like on it. No, oh, I know. I mean, they're <laughs> all. I think I like this track because of how demanding it is. I mean, turn one, that is going to make or break a lot of people's races. This is a stand and start, and then you can make it round the outside, and it's a right hand corner for the next. If I remember my uh, Zolder correctly. That left is the grippier line, so it's going to be really interesting. And the next two right-handers, they're long. They're everything on the car wants to pull you towards the grass. And then we now you've got two of those. Then the one of the hardest chicanes in sim racing. Sure. Uh, yeah, you're you're trying to remember it. And yes. Uh, sorry. Yeah. 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 Sorry. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> I think from here. <laughs> um, but yeah, the chicanes are really, really tricky. Um, that's for sure. Really tricky. Um, avoiding slowdowns, avoiding spins, avoiding... Uh, you can make moves, but I would say more... It's not about making the move, it's about putting the pressure on the other yeah. driver to... Uh, Very get similar to VAR, in it. Yeah. In, in, in that uh, situation. Uh, yeah, really take a lot of curve through this turn six chicane. Yeah, that's tricky. And then seven, which is almost flat out in these cars. Do I say it might be flat out in these cars? because you go into it at such a, a, a low speed. I think so, yeah. And then accelerate into the downhill braking zone of eight. Um, easy to lock a brake, I am sure. But it's so narrow around that part of the circuit that despite it being a big braking zone, it's not really that good an overtaking spot because it's so easy to uh, cover off the inside line and you're not going to go around the outside there. Then yeah. that very awkward 8-9 chicane, which does absolutely nothing really to the circuit, but just cause a bit of a pincer mm -hmm. effect and the jazz can collide. And of course we're using the slow chicane. I, I really like the slow chicane like that. I think it's quite satisfying over the curbs. You sort of know where the track limits are as well. Mm -hmm. And you just have to, you know, get there and then laps over and you do it all over again. Yeah, it's demanding. Yeah, I like I like the last chicane. I'm usually, I think we said this before the broadcast, I'm usually a fast chicane sort of guy. But here, definitely, definitely prefers the slow one. Um, yeah, it's a good way to round up a tricky lap is with another tricky chicane. Yeah, the fast chicane is like absolutely a menace. The amount of, yeah. I think we do a radicals race there, and the amount of drives would just dip a wheel onto the grass on the exit and then bomb it into a wall. Yeah. Um, absolutely. Uh, good call that we are not using that tonight. Uh, let's go over to uh, qualifying. We'll show you a quick advert beforehand and then we'll be trackside at Zolder. Are you struggling for consistency in your sim racing? Does your I rating look like a roller coaster? If so, we have good news for you. The way to get more consistent is to first understand what you're doing differently than the professionals. And VRS is the answer. With our competitive subscription, you will have the telemetry, setups, tutorials, and everything else you need to fully analyze your driving. Our data packs and the ability to compare your driving with the best in the world will show you exactly where to adjust your inputs, change your driving line, and shave seconds off of your lap times. And our powerful and precise Direct Force Pro Wheelbase and Precision Pedals are being used by some of the world's best drivers. All these champions agree that VRS hardware is not just the best on the market, it's also 
priced well below the competition. So if you're looking to upgrade to direct drive and the best pedals in sim racing, the RS is your answer. If you want to get better, get faster, and make it happen sooner rather than later, you owe it to yourself to find out why so many people are switching to VRS. You'll be so glad that you did. Visit www.virtualracingschool.com and learn why the best use VRS. Welcome to Zolder. We are at the circuit now and seeing the drivers go out for their first lap times. Amateurs get 10 minutes out on track and then the pros get another 12 minutes and uh, the grid positions overall set the grid for the two heats. Top six go through from each of the heats into the A final. The rest will go into the B final and the top three from those B final also get into the A final. Never really explained that particularly well, I think. But hopefully most of you, especially those who have watched before, will be familiar with it. Uh, welcome to Thomas Hansen um, in the chats as well as uh, you can see a couple of the uh, Simro Sweden drivers get underway on their newest laps. Yeah, let's see how they get on. Um, I, don't th I do think there will be a big divide here in lap times from the AMS to the pros. Obviously, there's a couple of AMS that will be able to hold their own. But like I said, very technical track. There's a lot of time to be found in uh, maximizing the track width and uh, knowing the track limits, as we've mentioned, uh, a very lot of time. Awful now with the gravel there. Do not touch that gravel. That used to be the racing line. Yeah, now anymore. it's just slows you down too much. Yeah. Let's follow Tom here through the chicane to remind myself of the... Not too much of the... I mean, that looked good, to be fair. Yeah, thought well, he may have took, taken too much of the first one, but he, he kept control. Didn't there used to be a sausage curb on the entry of the first one? Or is it here, is the sausage curbs? Yeah, OK. It's, oh, no, they're the triples. Right, OK, it's my memory. I think the last time I competitively drove here was the 23 hour, so it was a long time ago. Well, apart from that fateful throw fix where I lost like 170 I rate and I don't want to talk about. <laughs> I just jumped in randomly and uh, put it on pole, and then I was dead in T2, so uh, the first chicane, rather. Um, that was tragic. As Stefano Senna taking part in qualifying, he did have a qualifying ban last week. He also missed, I think, maybe the two weeks before that. So it's good to see him back out on circuit and with a, an opportunity to set a strong qualifying lap. 287. We have got, I think, 25 drivers out here tonight, so it should be a, uh, a pretty good field. Uh, hello, Thomas and chat. Yeah, some really nice liveries. I quite like that um, livery from Senna just then. Um, very nice. I see everyone's gone with the Porsche Cup, being that it's the Porsche Cup event. It'd be, I think, disrespectful for them not to. <laughs> <laughs> if everyone else was going to go for it. Uh, yeah. Bernand, up to first position. Uh, Pedersen, who has been so dominant recently. But Ben Pedersen, whilst he has been dominant in the AMS in recent rounds and, and really across the whole season, his qualifying performances haven't necessarily been great. At VIR, he went from ninth to second in two corners at the start of the seat. But he only qualified in, I think, 18th position, but he was up to basically fourth within one corner. So, you know, Pedersen won't necessarily take pole, but watch out for him in the race. Yeah, for sure. I get confused. There's already three Pedersons. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I do my best. Well, like you said, of all the corners you called, that was the lockup. Quite a satisfying corner, though, that. Uh, if you I, get it right. Yeah, but I feel, I don't know, I don't know what it is about the corner. Maybe I'm too passive. I very rarely overshoot it. Very nice. There's something, there's, there's like a black hole or something which like gravitates the car <laughs> to the apex on that corner. It's quite nice. Have you ever driven a Porsche Cup here? I don't, I'm not sure if I ever have. Y yes, I, years ago, I did a race with, uh, oh, was Nick Horn, very close to pole position. Come on, Nick, you can do this. Uh, Kirsten's goes ahead of him and Van Horn as well. So it's a Dutch 1-2 here in Belgium. Uh, Lewitson as well across the line. Where does he go? He does not change. Uh, but yeah, I, I did years ago, like a quite a long a race around here and finished second, I think. But not that, that was that was in the old Porsche Cup, to be fair. Yeah, that's a big lap from Ben Pedersen. Well, compared to the other lap times we're seeing. Yeah, that's very good. He's now 4.9K. Is Ben, and he's an amp. Yeah, Mid-season uh, promotion inbound. 
Well, it's a bit late, unfortunately. Also, his number never works. I know I don't understand this. I think I set his number in the league, but he always comes up as number 19. I don't know what witchcraft he's got in that, but... I always check it, but it never works. <laughs> <laughs> so, Glenn on a lap here. Edwin, just trying to see sex times if anyone's looking fast. Decent lap here from Edwin. Yeah, agreed. He has been pretty good in qualifying recently. Mm, nah, he's going to be quite far off. Yeah, sector two was. He's probably two gonna seconds be, off. But I, I'm going to go for sixth here. Well, unless you're seeing different temperatures. For me, sector two was two seconds off. That's what I saw. Maybe I'm seeing it wrong. Well, I'm going to say sixth for this next lap in that case. <laughs> Let's see what Luke can do. He's uh, he looked good at the start of the season. He's got caught up in some um, moments in other races that have cost him, uh, but he had a strong uh, strong showing in Hockenheim. That feels like a lifetime ago. Does Hockenheim? No? It really does. Yeah, we're still in the first half of the season. That's yes, right. We're going. This is a long one, right? This is going. Um, how many rounds? Six, four, twelve. The whole wide racing season. End of May. This is the last round, last day of May, I believe. Uh, Swan almost hitting the wall there. I heard it, yeah, I don't know if it would count. And of course, if, if he did, then it would cause a 0x and, and that would be the end of his lap, so he's still pushing along. Difficult corner this. I can't, I can't imagine what the exit of two is like in the rain when that comes around. Man, yeah. Because you never really have the car in the dry. And you're right, we used to great use the gravel there. Now that would definitely slow you down. You can see with the amount of gravel on the track, a few people are still using it, but it's definitely not an advantage. A lot of curb. Yeah, I like doing what, exactly what he did. <clears throat> not much on the first, but then straighten the car up and uh, yeet over the second. Let's see what he does here. Do you want to avoid all on the first, all on the second, but open up for the third so you can get the throttle down. Yeah, that's not bad. Bad. Oh, he's backed out. Yeah. Did he cut the circuit? I'm not sure. Uh, Forsen, by the way, went above where I anticipated. He's up to third, but a long way off Ben Pedersen, who uh, has absolutely fixed his qualifying issues from recent rounds. And Slurritsen, he's recently put in his first lap time, and he goes to 12th. Nick Kirsten's improving, the Dutch driver. It's not a Dutch 1-2 anymore, but it is a 3-4. Kasper Christensen, he yeah, moves up P5. to fifth place. One of the most, uh, I think, second place out of the Yams at the moment in the championship, but still three quarters of a second off Pedersen. Adam's doing what he can, or I say this isn't not the best at third sector, not the best first sector. No. I'm sure if he backed off, or maybe I was just being harsh about his driving. Let's keep an eye on him, how close he could get to Ben, because obviously these uh, guys do qualify in their position against the pros. It's not like there's a pro starting grid and an AM starting grid, so how you how you qualify an AM is actually super crucial. Absolutely. But, yeah, because it can buy you a lot of positions. I mean, Pedersen could potentially have 10 cars between him and the next AM once we go into the uh, second qualifying. Which will have another 10 drivers setting times. Uh, Horn, who was on the front row at one point, he improves on this latest lap, but he's still 1.3 seconds off the pace. Is ahead of his teammate Tom Heritage, nonetheless. He should have done more than 30 laps practice. Yeah. It's, it's diagnosis. Apparently, he was uh, adulting during the week. So. Adulting, adulting sucks. Yeah. That's what he said. Yeah, I know, I read it. <laughs> <laughs> um. <coughs> So, uh, yeah, yeah, so he is far down, Swan, going for that pit lane. Shouldn't be an impact, but it is one of the worst pit lane entries uh, ever imagined. That one. Well, this and uh, Canada. Um, Montreal. Yeah, they're, it's dumb, because if the guy in, if the guy in front of you went to the break, like, you, I don't get it. Those are two pit entries that I don't understand. You're flat behind them with full commitment to drive through them if they don't get out of the way in time. Sure. So I've always, I've always disliked those pit entries. 
Uh, I, I wanted to race in DGFX, which is now uh, Ivra in the support series for that. And uh, my teammate wiped out a master when he just tried to serve her, <laughs> tried to come into the pits and just didn't break and wiped out a master from about 200 meters back. And uh, I think that cost us the championship. So I really don't like that bit late in entry. Uh, Heritage was unable to improve. He remained in P12. And I think that is the end of the amateur qualifying. I don't believe anyone else will have time to set another lap. So here comes the pro drivers. Uh, Dayach in chat saying, Yelan Destras go. Destras was good last time out. I think he got third or fourth in the end, so watch out for him. He is going to be on those front few rows of the grid, I'm sure. So I've been racing uh, Dimbolo, or Dim Dimbolo all week in at Monza in the rain. He's been um, looking strong, very strong actually. And that's <coughs> in the GT3s, is it? Yeah. That's what I've been doing all week long. Eight or nine of those. Right, so we'll see pretty early on uh, where their lap times are going to be. I think we can use Ben Pedersen's as a good uh, marker. So the first few times starting now. So we've got Bremer, Dimbolo, Lahn, Distras, Mayenborg, he's done the qualifying correct this time. Uh, Chaye, uh, Lazarus, Biedelak, uh, Nikolai Pedersen, Parker, and Hammer. Yet to complete times. Uh, Nick Horn in chat saying, my optimal, optimal would have put me am P2. I just can't hook it up. Bad luck on that one. And if I'd have picked different lottery numbers, I'd be rich by now. <laughs> <laughs> it's true. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, yeah, I guess you're right. I mean, but I, I, don't, I don't want to argue with, with David. So, Nick, if you want to put something in chat um, <laughs> in response to that, feel free. We can fill up this uh, pure qualifying of uh, you two having an argument. <laughs> hey, Robert. Hey, Nick. I'm only playing. <laughs> I never look at optimal in qualifying. That would be too depressing. I, I never look at it, ever, in all the four years I've been sim racing. Uh, Benant put in a very late time, I think, in the AMS. So he um, improved, but I think uh, that might be up to the limit. So he might be worth investigating that, unless my eyes are playing uh, tricks with me. Uh, here comes the first, two pro uh, first few pros. And they are a long way off Pedersen still. There goes Nikolai Pedersen. It's a Pedersen 1 2, Mayenborg. We were riding on board, it goes to P3. We're still waiting for a few of the other big names like Hammer and Lazarus. But that is a very strong start. Alexander as well, moving up to P5. And already the cars are filling up between the top two arms. Yeah, for sure. Double Pedersen. Um, but let's give them more time. Um, I think second lap might be the fastest around a track like this. It's quite uh, short, but let's see. As my laptop screen goes off. Oh, no. I mean, oh, no, it's back now. It's back now. I, I didn't touch it. I used to have a laptop which worked when you did what you just did, where you had to move the screen. <laughs> like, you had to, like, tilt it down and then tilt it up again, and it would start working. And I think it was like that for two years. <laughs> God. But I, I just knew all the quirks of it. No one else would be able to turn it on. Really good security on that thing. Um, Lazarus, with one more corner to come, is sector times. Oh, hang on. I don't think. I think this is out lap. I don't think this is a proper lap. So I mean, it's a very quick out lap, but I don't think it's going to be uh, an actual time because I didn't see a first sector being put in by him. Oh no, it was a time. There you go. Goes up to P3. No first sector, according to our screens, but still P3. Um, Dimbolo improves again. That's a big improvement from him into second now. Yeah, under one and a half tenths now. Fiedlack into P4, four tenths. And he's got his camera on. Yeah, Ben Pedersen's lap is looking uh, mighty strong at the moment. There's Lane sitting seventh. But... Oh, Ooh. there's Jass. Yeah, there you go. And Nicholas HPX will be delighted with that one, as will be Dayach, because their man, the Swiss driver, 
very close to breaking the 90 second barrier. 90 second barrier, that was fast, I'll give you that. <laughs> I had to pause for a moment what you were talking about. So yeah, very good. Yeah, brilliant lap from Distress. And um, was, that, was that his first lap? I didn't see another lap come up uh, on the board. Yeah, I think you might be right, yeah. Yeah, very nice. Lana's backing off here. Oh, a good qualifying gain for self toy line. Didn't have a good round last time out. He was leading the championship after the first three rounds of the championship. But uh, is now down into second and might drop further down if uh, you can't improve on this qualifying. But it is very close in front of him. He only needs to find a couple of tenths and he'll be on the third row. And stays like this, I do wish this track was more popular. It's just one of those tracks that A, it doesn't get used, and when it does, it doesn't get used. <laughs> you know. Do, oh, look at that time from Nikolai Pedersen. Wow. Absolutely miles clear of the rest. Wow. Uh, what an improvement. And now Hammer goes fast as well. I think that was Hammer's first lap time. wonder if those guys were maybe doing uh, a double warm-up lap or at least one warm-up lap. And if they were doing that, then that is clearly the strat to go for. That is completely blowing the rest of the drives out the water. And it is Hammer on pole position. I think it would be his third consecutive pole position if he could take this. Yeah. Yeah, for sure. Um, wow. So where did that put uh, Ben Pedersen's lap seven tenths off? Yeah, so that's really impressive. Hammer and uh, Nikolai Pedersen have set themselves apart. Four tenths back is uh, now Destrez. Let's see, Destrez has only got one lap in himself. Let's see what he can manage. <clears throat> Gabriel Salomon in chat, uh, last season champion, of course, uh, saying it is his favorite track. Yeah, great so, uh, I think that's a decent shout, Gabriel. Unfortunately, didn't visit it during his championship winning season. Hopefully, he'll be in the PESC qualifiers, which I'm sure Gabriel will be uh, going for next uh, later in the year. That's oh, that's too much, much surely. That is a slowdown. He's still got time to stay out there if he's got the fuel and do another lap. Or he could, he's got enough time as well to go back to the pits. Only just, though. Only just, yeah, I was about to say. Uh, no, no, he's got enough time. Four minutes. Right, yeah, you need, what, yeah. three? Yeah. Well, three if you absolutely gun it out yeah, of pit. Three if you, yeah, three if you, yeah. If you oh, we haven't even talked. It, it, won't be, it won't come into play here, but this pit ex We talked about the pit entry being so bad. Yeah. Pit yeah. exit onto the apex. No one knows where anyone else is. Yeah, it's, acute, it's the angle's acute, acute enough that you can't see, and you're joining at the apex, almost full speed. Yeah. Honestly. This entry and exit. I love the track, and we couldn't think of one corner we liked, but... <laughs> we, oh, we can think of loads of faults for it. Yeah. Like, uh, you know, we could go on for, for an hour, but yeah, we, we love do it. like it. <laughs> There's just nothing we like about it. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. No, we, we like the idea of it. Yes. We like that it exists. Yeah. Now, yeah, I've always enjoyed the racing here. Yeah, yeah. And, but yeah, with Hammer on pole, he might be tricky to overtake. I mean, that has been the case for the last two weeks. Um, so, uh, Nicola Pedersen with an improvement, now only a tenth mm. back rather than 1.3. So, yeah, this is a slow down lap now for Pedersen as Lane improves a bit, goes up to eighth. Lazarus down in ninth though, I mean Lazarus wasn't fantastic last time out either at VIR, the man who won uh, a race back at Hockenheim. I think he won uh, both his races at Brands Hatch as well, but Lazarus has lost a bit of momentum since then. Where is the third Pedersen? I only count two. I think that's a bit insulting. Rasmus Pedersen is in P19. I think you're just not looking far enough down the screen. Ah. OK. Uh, Gabriel Salomon saying, yeah, contenders on Zolder. That won't be, that's not going to be totally chaos. Yes, it will. Well, they're all chaos. <laughs> well, uh, at the moment, they use short red ball ring, so, I mean. Short Silverstone. And, uh, or, and they've used it the two years in a row. It's like, come on, I racing do something different this year. I love watching those contender races because they're just top split events from certain time zones, right? That's all it is. Points. Or does it work different nowadays? Uh, yeah, yeah. It's, yeah, it's top split. Yeah. It, well, this is, yeah, for the qualifiers and then yeah. the contenders is like a, a B League series yeah. sort of thing. Lazarus improves this time. I was criticising him before. He's improved his, his game now. Uh, I don't know how these drives are seemingly quite... Ooh, that's close to a slowdown for Pedersen. 
Yeah, it was a slow down. That will be his last attempt. He will have no more time to set another improvement. So that might just be Hammer Safe, who uh, still is trying to improve House and Jack. Yeah, I'm keeping an eye. He's faster. Uh, nah, he's slow. Yeah, no, and Sector 2 is awful. Absolutely awful. James Parker. First sector, four tenths down on the top guys. Second sector, good though. Eh, it's not great. Needs to improve by a tenth in order to move up a place. Shea up to nine. So it's just Parker to come round the final corner, approaches the line. He's taking the shortest route, which looks like he's confident about his time, but he shouldn't have been, because it wasn't an improvement. And it's a damp squib to end off damp the squid. session. Um, so that is Parker in eighth place, Hammer again on pole position. The guy misses the first two rounds. He comes in for round three, and he's got pole position in every qualifying sense. But no camera this time. With, uh... Yeah, but we get to see his profile picture, and he's a good looking good looking guy it is a good looking profile picture but i liked the person in the background waving and stuff that's a good point yes well maybe we scared them off Stand out we were a bit creepy yeah yeah or maybe they're a ghost <laughs> hammer got uh concerned himself um let's have a look at the grid then for heat one we go straight into it uh philip hammer is on pole position again followed by lazarus pedersen that's not going to be a good battle when it comes to the pinks uh dim below <laughs> Cheye, Lan, uh, Kirstens is top of the arms for this race. Then it's Christensen, Bremer, uh, Rasmus Pedersen, uh, Van Horn, Heritage, and Broughton Turner. Ah, so it's two THR Simsport drivers at the uh, rear of the field. And Hammer once again on the pole position. Top six, of course, make their way through from this heat into the A final. So that is the positions we really need to be looking out for. So even if Pedersen does look quite comfortable uh, out in the lead, or Prodigy's Hammer is looking quite comfortable out in the lead, it's that sixth place which is arguably more significant. Yeah, I say T1 leaks into T2 and being on the... I assume the pulse is going to be on the left. I'm sure of it. I think it's the right. I'm trying to look at the screen, see where those uh, boards are. But no, Hammer's not on the grid yet. Well, actually, neither of the top two are on the grid. Oh, no, he is on, he is on the... Yeah, left. He's on the left. Yeah, that's what he said. Yeah, You're so right. T2 is on the right. So if what I'm saying is P2 can be... As long as you sure. get a good start, just hang it out. I know you're on cold tyres, and I know this... Uh, but you can, make it, you can make it work. You do not want to be on the uh, outside of T2. Because you just touch doors and blame that code. Oh, I didn't mean to. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I didn't mean to. See ya. <laughs> now, yeah, this is tricky uh, door to door racing because, say, the t turn one comes up fast. Just dim below to get on the grid. We do have a longer gridding period for this race. It's two minutes. The other race would just be one minute. And dim below's missed the grid. I don't know why. So that could be a hole in the grid and it will help everyone else get into the top six. But here we go then. Lights coming on for race one from Zolder. And away we launch. It's a good start for Apostator. It's an awful start for Lazarus. He's going to drop Yikes. five places by the time they even get into turn one. So it's Hammer leading the way. It is Pedersen in second place. Oh. And already one of the drives coming out of the pits as well. But there is Hammer leading them through. Hopefully Dimbolo doesn't make contact with anyone. He is still behind coming out of the pits. Uh, but good start for Shea. Good start for Lani and Kirsten's. But Lazarus down six places. He got a lot of wheel spin. Yeah, there was almost a three wide there. I think it was the backing out that caused the spin, to be honest. That's my guess. Uh, it all happened so quickly. Uh, Van Horn up lots of positions. He was P11 in this uh, heat and sitting strong right now in P7, but obviously with a very fast uh, Lazarus right behind him. As, so down. as I stop talking about That's Robert Van Horn on stream now, carry on. We had a, a commentator's curse on the Apex Racing TV highlights that we posted uh, a couple of days ago. Maybe the, that's the contest curse for the ePool edition. So thank you for that. You're welcome. I aim to please. Yeah. 
Uh, who should I talk about next? Uh, well, I think Philip Hammer's won enough, so maybe yeah. if you talk at him. Philip Hammer pulled almost a four tenth gap already. Oh, I actually worried it was him then. Christensen. Having a nightmare here. He's going to be uh, way back. We'll take a look at what happened. Maybe a door to door there. It looked like. Um, I wouldn't be surprised if it was crowded out. Happens yeah. a lot. Again, that corner is so narrow. And uh, sometimes you do just have to take the grass on the left in order to miss the contact. Pedersen's staying very close to Hammer. But we sort of saw this last week as well. Hammer actually, from his two pole positions, uh, well, yeah, he lost the lead last time out at VAR, but he was able to bring it back straight away. He's not necessarily the most competent driver on lap one, but every lap that goes past it will be more tricky to beat him, and only 10 minutes to do it in this race one. Bremer currently in that sixth place, once again performing well for Simre Sweden Esports, but Lazarus, who starts on the front row, uh, is piling on the pressure. Yeah, yeah, Hammer's going to be tough to beat. Uh, the gap, while not huge, is uh, slowly going up, and... You know, he's not one to defend ghosts, oh what we've seen in previous uh, races. Yeah, I'm not sure what's happened there. Shea losing a place. Yeah, so he's not one to, what I say, defend ghosts and get himself offline just for the sake of hoping to defend something that's not happening. Um, so, yeah, Pedersen's going to have to, if he wants to get his done, he's going to have to actually make a move. As that gap is almost uh, half a second as it drops two tenths. So, OK, we mentioned something else. They're quite spread out. Um, Lazarus up position. Yeah, there's, uh, the mid-pack is looking uh, feisty. Let's yeah. see. Rasmus Pedersen may be with a mistake because he's just lost two plays and he might lose a third. That is a very nice move. I think Strong he problem. may have been serving a slowdown, the guy at the back there, because he just seemed to keep sure. slowing. Keep no, that's slowing. A good point. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, I think he tried to block off the court. Not not block in a bad way, I mean, you know, defend with the slowdown, but looks like he got swamped. So he didn't below side on the pits, but fortunately around this circuit, it's not seemingly a big penalty to start from the pits. It varies so much from track to track. Into Lagos, it's an advantage, if anything, to start from the pits. Uh, but around here, it maybe loses you about five seconds. So Dimbolo still with a very slim chance at getting into the top six. I think most of all, it's just going to be about improving his position for the starting grid for the B final. As in lead, Hammer still just four tenths of a second ahead. Still can't get away. And we six minutes away from the finish of this heat one. Yeah, these two have classed their own at the moment. Oh, Bremer's gone wide. I think that's a self mistake. Yeah, he's dropped to position. He's got um, two and a half seconds behind him to Heritage, Van Horn, Dimbelow, that battle that's happening. And at least one of his teammates is going through in the form of Nick Kirstens, who is up two places at the moment. Kirstens second place as the Yam drivers. Uh, Christensen, by the way, just getting past Broughton Turner as well. Broughton Turner falling off the back of the field in the last couple of laps. Oh, no. Oh, no. Is that Dimbolo into um, Van Horn? Not sure. I, it, again, it happened so fast. We, we got to it as it was happening. Well, we're going to lose another position in here is Heritage. So Dimbolo now up to P8 on the pits. As we're going to get some replays. And uh, yeah, it was so much wheel spin from Lazarus. And then let's see here. Oh, yeah, Christensen pick, picked up a tap there, but good save, really good save. And they all funnel down very nicely. Yeah, that, that's exactly Ooh. what I thought had happened. Yeah. So this is what we assume is Pedersen's slowdown, let's see. Uh, so he'd already picked up the slowdown probably from the chicane previous. Yeah, and, and just served it not very late. Out of the uh, next chicane. Yeah, because I think he gets done by every car here. Yeah. Ah, Pedersen of the Ben variety has had a problem. And he's Oof. down two places. He's barely in the lead of the amateur um, race now. Yeah, it's like one and a half seconds ahead of his, uh, of, is it Nick Kirstens? Yeah, the, the man who's been 
really struggling in qualifying in the last couple of rounds and then storms his way up through the race. Well, tonight it's a bit the other way around. He's still doing very well, obviously, is Ben Pedersen. But uh, he's dropped two places now from his race start, which has not been the case really for the entire season. Indeed. Uh, Trying to get a replay of what happened. This race is, uh, for a short race, a lot's happening. And they're spread out so far. If this was a half an hour race, we'd be dealing with uh, lappers. Yeah. 19 seconds in, what have we had? Six minutes? Ah, oh, we've got a replay of what happened to Pedersen. Is it going to be a slowdown? Yeah, Oof. I think that's too much of the second curve. I mean, ah, in fact, he actually loses it on this corner. Oh, wow. So that's... And he oh, just avoids the wall. I mean, that wow. could have been a lot worse. On the old... Yeah, 100%. That's what I was going to say. That hit the wall. That, that's another thing, like VIR and Road Atlanta. I, I was watching a stream of Road Atlanta yesterday. Saw someone go off on one. They, <laughs> you should be in the wall. <laughs> yeah, they barely lost a whole second. They just drove straight back on the track and carried on. I was like, okay, this is not... Sure. Uh, and VIR as well. Like, VIR, I used to joke, there's no 1X in. There's only a 4. Because that yeah. 1X, you'll convert. 100%. Because you're going to hit something. Uh, so, yeah, to see him power slide onto the grass like that, that's so different to what I remember as older. I mean, I think... I mean, obviously, I've said it before, but it depends how wet the grass is, uh, which affects how slippery it is in real life. And so um, I guess that's more realistic for it to slow down the car like that. But if for some reason, it does feel like it's it's wrong. And it, that's obviously, yeah. For, the, for us, for years, yeah. it's been a, there's been a way to these tracks. Um, yeah, to see what he did, I thought he was slamming into the wall 100%. But right now, he's sitting P4. Heart rate a little higher, probably, but... Maybe that should be a graphic that we add. Yeah, just every driver has to rate. provide a heart rate. No, but no, they don't have to provide. We just have to make it up. I've been thinking about adding one to my stream because I've got the, you know, the Porsche Tycoon watch with the heart rate built in. So I thought it'd be a good way to add it. Sure. Yeah. yeah. And to talk about my watch. Do you <laughs> do you know how high? Oh, oh right. Oh no, he's gone into the back of him. That's his patience. Yeah. yeah. Um, do you know how high your heart rate gets when you sim racing? I, I used to wear uh, Fitbit with a heart rate monitor. I, I've always worn, I've, I've worn one for a very long time. Um, but no, I'm an athlete, so I'm in complete control of it at all times. Uh, yeah, so it never never goes above 80? No, but, no, about 64 never really goes. Yeah, yeah, you know, of course. Just a waste? Yeah, I never I never get bright red and sweaty on stream or anything. No, There's no signs. Oh, Robert, come on. He's just overtaken Heritage as well. But he's giving it up. Yeah. Not his day, unfortunately. As we're with Salvatore Lane. Uh, this is the battle for P2. And this is the white flag lap. I was, I was giving a lot of drivers a lot of stick earlier on in qualifying, saying they're not doing very well tonight, are they? And to be fair, a lot of them are delivered. Lane was one of them. He was down in like 10th for most of qualifying. He ended up maybe 7th. And he's up four places in this race. So, uh, yeah, terrific work. I mean, he wasn't seventh, was he? He would have been... So if he started this race in sixth, he would have been 11th in qualifying. So yeah, he didn't improve his qualifying lap. But yeah, amazing. Just how change shows how things can change, because every position in this heat is basically two positions for the A-final. Yep, that's a really good point. Very good point. Or oh, this battle behind, it looks like the battle with um, Pedersen and... Uh, he might send it. Yeah, I think so. Oh, oh he's covering it. I thought he had a slowdown, but he's covering it. So what you need to do They're here. side by side. He might make it around there. No. No. Oh, he's blinking out. But he's all right. Has the lead. Philip Hammer. He's oh. undefeated. One at Road Atlanta, won both races at VAR. And he's going to win his first race as well and take the A final pole position as well here at Zolder. What a performance. Lane up four places to second. Shea in second, uh, sorry, in third. Uh, Pedersen top of the arms in fourth ahead of Kirsten's who makes it into the A final. He'll be very pleased about that one. And Lazarus, after a shocking start, did hold off Bremer and finishes it in that coveted P6. Yeah, tricky race. Uh, lots of changing positions apart from uh, Philip Hammer. I think statistically it might show the only person not to change position the entire race. I 
think so. Maybe Glenn Broughton Turner, who started last, I think finished last. So he was just the book ending of the uh, of of, of uh, the fastest and the slowest. Um, I think we have the grid already for race two. Wow. Nikolai Pedersen on pole position. Then it is Destraz. That's a very competitive front row. Then it's Pedalak, Parker, Meinborg, Veselek top of the Ams and in the cover to P6. Forsland, Swan, Bernand, Walker, Horn, Luritsen. I think we might already be going. No, no, we've got a bit of time. We've got a bit of time. Uh, Senna is in 13th as well, just at the back of the field. Is there some, what's that white on the track? So it's uh, it's the, the tra session transition. Uh, there's still something there, so they've got to drive through that. <laughs> um, I think it'd be gone by the time they get in. Ah, watch it for it disappearing. Uh, oh, everyone just about got on the grid, but it was very close. Uh, Pedersen then on the pole position, the head of this heat two. Lights coming on. It is Destras alongside him on the front row of the grid. And away we launch. It's a decent start for P2. Whoa. He's trying to cover off straight away, Whoa. and that is some very aggressive defending. And he does keep P2, but it was James Parker who took advantage and was able to gain some places. Fiedelak was the one who lost out, and that's four drivers off in the background. Banan, Forston, Walker, and Veselek all suffering in the early stages. That uh, P2 move was very reminiscent of Schumacher every race. I don't yeah. know if you remember the Schumacher, how he, that was how he used to line up his car. Um, I don't know, we need to check that because... Oh, Lewitson's off as well. Yeah, if that was intimidation to the point where the guy had to lift, then penalty. If he always had the space and he was doing it just to intimidate, then that's fine. But my God, there was a wall there. Oh yeah, I thought they were gonna make contact <laughs> and then they'd both bounce back into the middle of the circuit and the entire field would be involved. So uh, I'm pleased only four drivers went off at someone. Nick Horn, Nick Horn is in the top six, and this is not this is not a demonstration. Oh, he's messed it up. Oh, come on, Nick. No, Nick. <laughs> you did you no. just do commentators? No, curse. no, he's staying ahead. Let's not jump ahead of ourselves. Come on, Nick. He's on the wrong side. Oh, come on, Nick. Oh, oh come up. on, switch come back. back. I mean, they're falling off around you, Nick. You gotta get through here. Still the wrong he's side. Tried to come back on Luke Swan. Keep your foot down. He's going to be, he may, not, he may even have trouble now with uh, Senna because of the line. Uh, oh yeah. no, here comes Stefano. Oh, it, it's, I mean, oh man, it's just, that's just a, shame. a joke, isn't it? No, that's a shame. Oh, okay. Pedersen's pulled almost a second gap to Destraz. Uh, Parker, uh, another eight tenths back. Mayerborg even further back. So quite some gaps already forming at the front. And the top six, as long as we don't see any mistakes, uh, Luke Swan's got almost a three second. Uh, oof. Oh, sorry, I was keeping an eye on that. that these are very, very close to each other. But yeah, the top six have this, uh, have this almost a lockdown at the moment. The gaps are very well separated, and there's a three second gap to Senna. Yeah, and that's a very good top six. Oh, Destress has passed. Uh, Pedersen must have got a slow yeah. down. And you might lose out to P2 as well, but you can serve it on the mid corner here. Or did he just run wide? I wonder if he ran wide, maybe, at the chicane. It's certainly up to full speed now. That was a very good chicane. But uh, that's that's all Destras needed. And Pedersen will very much struggle to bring that back now. I'm hoping we get uh, a top-down camera for that uh, Schumacher move at the beginning. Yes. <laughs> well, I mean, and you summarised it well. If he was clear, the Correct. whole time, if then, he was always ahead, it's fine. Yeah, yeah. Then it's aggressive, but I think on the race start, it's all right. I mean, blocking is always a bit of a questionable thing, but I think on the race start, it's excusable. If the guy had to lift and not if be body lift, slammed, yeah. <laughs> uh, if you're just side typing someone, that's not that's not all right. I couldn't believe how fast he uh, changed direction. I say, uh, yeah, that was a Schumacher move. He executed brilliantly, I must say, back in the day. He used to actually angle his car, not straight. Well, ev everyone does it a little bit now. Brundle yeah. always picks up on it, doesn't he? And yeah, but you know, no, you should see how Schumacher used oh, to do yeah, it. It sure, was like yeah. you would be looking at Schumacher and think, wait, why are you <laughs> pointing at me? I'm your teammates. <laughs> yeah, I'm your what teammate. You doing? <laughs> uh, brilliant. Um, so, yeah, Nick Horn 
they obviously dropped to 11th uh, with that. Yeah, we all know. With that turn. Um, Senna dropping back, so it's almost four, around that four or five second mark now. Walker just going past Bernand, who we're watching in the background. Yeah, getting them offline like that is um, a brilliant tactic. So at this track, that's, if you can't overtake, you just need to get them offline. And then uh, the hot risks of serving a slowdown double. You just want people mirror watching. Let's see what happened. To, I've just remembered that T1 incident that took out four cars. I assume it was just someone that locked up and Domino's. I mean, I mean, it nearly happened in race one, didn't it? Yes, there was almost a three wide, and then where they backed out, then someone uh, bonked someone in the rear, and I ran, they went. Brilliant save, though, the first race. Brilliant save. Tiny Rizu saying, Damn, you commentator. That might be in reference to Nick Horn, I'm not quite sure. But uh, yes, unfortunate for Nick. That was exciting. I'm not sure if Nick's ever been in the top six in this series. Um, and I think he had a chance, uh, maybe a small chance. I think he would have needed one of the other top six to go because Swan is a very competitive driver. He struggled to hold off, Senna, uh, it was hold off Swan, sorry. But, um, yep. That's a huge gap now between sixth and seventh. Absolutely huge gap. But that will be, I mean, I, I, you know, talk about, you know, P6 being a significant position. Even P7 can be all right because it gets you on the front row Correct. for the B final. So it still does matter where everyone else finishes. Yeah, and I completely agree. You can, um... all right, some replays coming in. Oh, no. Oh, he, he, he made contact. He did put him in the wall. Yeah, he put him in the wall. 100%. That was terrible. I mean, that. I mean, I think. I mean, that's almost suicide. I mean, he was lucky that he wasn't pitched into the wall. Yeah, that was terrible. That was. Uh... Okay, so that. Oh. oh no, that's yeah, that's not good driving either, is it? Um. I mean, he, he was barely making the corner. Yeah, it's tough. <laughs> so this is the Nick Horn incident. I mean, that. Senna might get away with that one because it's such a narrow chicane, but... Oh, is this what happened to Pedersen, our leader? Oh, Oof. too much first curve. Oh, mate. Served the slowdown well, though. Oh, and he's got it back. There he is. Pedersen, what a move. Did not think that was going to be on. Ooh, and geez. Tess just realises <laughs> if he's going to come back, he's got to do it straight away, but he hasn't. And... Well, we've had two more lead changes for the lead than I thought we would do in this race, so maybe we shouldn't rule out a third, but that will surely be decisive. Yeah, De Stras is uh, hungry. He does not... He wants all the points. This is going to be a good battle. Yeah, the the race start, that body slam... Uh, that's a that's clear-cut for me. Like, there's no two ways about it. You travelled yeah. five car widths to put someone in a wall. I, that's quick because his sponsor would have told him. No, typically a spot doesn't work at the beginning. Most of them, the R racing one, the crew chief one. Okay. Because it was the point. Like you I guess start you're with always a, an on yeah, stage, yeah. You're, yeah, exactly. It doesn't go green, green, green car on your right. Because <laughs> do yeah. you think we should have a radar like you have in most other racing games? Uh, I racing doesn't because it does not release that kind of telemetry which it thinks could be abused, etc. So um, yeah, so I racing's never going to do that. Whether we should or not. I don't know. Every skill I've developed, because I race into my majority, I don't need. Like, it. yes, it's nice. I see it in other games, but I like what it builds. A, what you ability you build, not having it. Sure. In ACC, you stare at it like that's where you're driving. So, yeah, I don't know. I like. I do like the way I race. Instead, I, I can understand though, because I'm lucky we're having triple thirty twos and I think I can imagine on a single screen, people must. It must be the point where they're almost like, I'm not playing this because I'm blind. Like. Whereas in ACC, a single monitor becomes a much easier racing environment for that. Yeah. Seven seconds now, that gap outside oh. the top six. I was concerned that something was having to swan there, but I think he's all right. So this is the overtake. And it was a, a legit overtake. It wasn't a mistake. You see, it's going to keep it on the left. Really nice. Ooh. Why turn in for that T2? And then just did not take any notes of him through T3. Knew he was clear. Knew he could take the racing line. Are the, are the liveries different sometimes in the replay than what I see? I've... I, 
like this livery, by the way. I think I mentioned it before the... Oh! oh. Did I just... Okay, I did, didn't I? Who would you like me to talk about next? Well, you mentioned it before the broadcast. You mentioned it earlier in the stream, and you just mentioned it there, but that's the first time that he's fun. <laughs> okay. Uh. It's a very... <laughs> I feel bad. It's a very nice... I don't know how the uh, production crew back there know who's going to crash when they change the camera. No, I mean... Because we talk about them because they come up on camera. So is it really us, Sam? Uh, it's not. We're we're being I guess we're, so. we're being made the full guys. I guess, yeah. It is a very nice livery from Sam uh, from Senna. It did look. It was helpful that we got to see. All right, white flag. So what? We've got a couple of corners to go. I can't imagine Distress is going to send it from six cents back. It's been a great battle from the two of them, though. Yeah, I, I think. Oh. I mean, Distress will be frustrated. Uh, he's not going to win this, but I mean, it was a good move from Pedersen. Oh no, Pedersen handed it to him with the slowdown. Let's not forget. Oh, uh, oh, for sure. But yeah. I don't think this jazz is going to look, look at it like that. Well, that's the way it is. <laughs> Just have to get used <laughs> to it. Oh, yeah, absolutely. <laughs> yeah, very spread out, a spread out race. And Nick, Nick Horn got up to ninth. That's going to help him in the B final. Yeah, it'll be sick from the good. If he can gain as many places in the first two corners as he did earlier, then he will be up to first by the first half lap. So, yeah, maybe we'll have a good chance. That's in the lead, Pedersen, with one more chicane to execute. And by half a second, he is going to hold on for Delta Sport. I think this is his first race win of the season, Nikolai Pedersen. And he does take that race win. Yeah, Another man who joined late on. First race back at Road Atlanta, and uh, he's delivered on that race win here at Zolden. He will start alongside his uh, rival, Philip Hammer, for the A final. Swan, the one and only amateur driver to get through. Uh, Forceland, the next best. He'll start on this first row of the grid, second position, uh, come the B final, uh, which will be through for you soon. But um, yeah, I'm, I'm just impressed by that move from Pedersen still. Really didn't think it was going to happen. Yeah, yeah, because like you say, we've had a lot of uh, change of positions, but usually mistake-driven, not overtake-driven. Mm. Um, it was a committal move. He wanted that pole to win conversion back. And um, yeah, we've seen a lot of the, a lot of these incidents have been early in the race or just the slowdowns. So this top six now, especially uh, now it's going to start counting um, because this is the big one, right? Top three go through to the A final. So we're going to see a lot more pressure on this race, I feel, at the front, uh, as we now see the names on screen. Yeah, here it is. Ewan Bremer on pole position, Edmund Forsland in second, and Dimblo third. So Dimblo and Bremer, I'd say, are the big favourites. Maybe Forsland will go with them. Walker's been fast, though. Uh, Rasmus Pedersen is in fifth, and it's Horn, Heritage, Bernand Van Horn, Loritsen, Christensen, who can be quick as well, Bezalek, who can be quick in 12th. Um, and then it is Broughton Turner and Senna rounding out the 14 cars. Who's going to get through? Dim below. He's going to get. You all go Bre uh, uh, Bremer, Dim below, and someone else, right? Yeah. I think Dim below can get the win here. It, 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 well, what's the motivation, though? Why would you want to. You, if you're in that top three position, you want to lock it down, right? Sure, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Don't risk it, guys. Just, just get through. Uh, just Christensen to get on the grid, but he is now there. So we can start the light sequence and get underway for this B final. Top three, make it through to the A. And away we launch. It's a good start for P2. It Might is. be the first time that P2 takes the lead off the season because he is bang alongside Bremer holding on at the moment. Those top two locking out the circuit. Oh. A couple of drivers going wide and there's almost a slide as well. Everyone struggling to apply the power coming through turn one. It is Bremer leading the way. Van Horn almost making contact with a couple of the THR cars as they make their way through turn two. But Bremer did hold oh, on. Oh, oh, and he's ahead of Forstland and Dimbolo. Yeah, we had a spinner just as the camera panned round there. Oh, that's hard into the wall. Hard into the wall. And everyone avoids. <laughs> Remarkable stuff. <laughs> um, yeah, I'm not sure what happened there, but it happened fast. Um, oh, no. Walker's off. One of the favourites to get through. He had a good chance from fourth on the grid. And Mads Lewitz has had an unrelated issue. Oh, and Ryan Walker looks like he's car's terminal. He's not going to be able to finish like that. Oh, don't take each other out, guys, again. 
That's the THR cars. Yeah, I think one of the THR cars is very damaged. Let's see. It was Heritage who went in the war who was that training car, but I'm surprised how good it still looks because he slams against the wall. Right, at the risk of mentioning it now, but uh, I said this last time, but Robert Van Horn's up quite a few positions, so something definitely happened to the uh, THR cars there. Mm. So Bremer, Forsland, and Dimbolo still the same way around. Nick Horn just electric on the starts tonight. Up two places. He's into P4. Oh, and there's almost a changeable position for P2 because Dimbolo was getting aggressive. And Dimbolo's gone wide, and Nick Horn is into the top three again. And this could be on this time because Dimbolo has set himself quite a challenge, as he did in his heat when he started from the pit lane. This time he's gone five miles off the circuit at T1, and he's down to sixth, and he's got to get up to third in 12 minutes. Right, I get to say it. There can only be one Horn. The Horns are battling for that. All important top three. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> this is no longer a Pedersen dominated event. It's, it's about the horns this race. But then again, Pedersen and Dimbelo behind, these guys need to uh, get going. Best way to put it. But yes, I was wrong. The people for the top three were fighting for position, not just locking down their position. Top three gets you through to the A final, gives you the opportunity to score big points. Oh, now, that's wide. Oh, yeah, and he actually. I love that. Gave up turning. He was like, no, I'm sick of locking up and well, missing the corner. I'm, I'm sick of it. I'm going to come off the brake. Oh, Van Horn's ahead. Horn on Horn. It is Van Horn ahead now into P3. Now, why that's crucial is because he knows Dimbolo and Pedersen are really fast as they are past already. So that doesn't solve anything. <laughs> Horn not fighting it. Dimbolo gets through. I think Van Nick Horn, Horn can beat Pedersen. I'm not sure if he can beat Dimbolo. I'm not sure what happened to Nick Horn there. I don't know if that was a slowdown, but you don't let people buy. So he must have had a slowdown. I think I think Nick might be, you know, you're a fan of chess, and I think Nick might be a fan of 4D chess. Because I think he might be one step ahead of us, sir. I mean, don't go wrong, letting people to buy who you know are rapid and are gonna be aggressive and can free up positions is definitely a good call. I'm finding out in the wet. If someone's aggressive behind you, go, go there and play with others in front of you, <laughs> and you'll win. It's been brilliant, brilliant week. So Bremer, Forsland, Van Horn are our top three. Uh, R. Pedersen, let me think. I don't look at the screen because I won't. it's currently up. On, on uh, the... Rain? No, <laughs> I can't remember. <laughs> oh yeah, that Raz... famous driver, Raymond Pedersen. Oh come on, there's three of them. Oh, so this is what Nick needs. Uh, Robert, sorry, Robert Van Horn. God, there's two horns, I'm getting confused now. He needs these two fighting. But there's still plenty of time left in this race. If Dimbelo plays his cards. Oh, oh, there he goes. It's going to be the better exit. Oh, oh, oh and now that oh. awkward corner there. And they make contact. Oh. They're into the wall. Can they avoid behind? Horn gets put in the wall. And what disappointment. Oh, my life. And it wasn't an, an accident worth having. I said it's a rubbish corner, that. And it's a Dutch 1-2-3 still, and with Van Horn now with a strong hold. But Dimbelo's car is still going. It's just the question of how much damage has he got? I'm not sure what happened there. Like, uh, um, like obviously, it... it yeah, the corner opens up and you head into that chicane area. Dimbelo wasn't left a lot of space, but he didn't need a lot. And I think Dimbelo overreacted a little bit. We didn't get to see what happened on the um, on the way out, but it looks like those guys were just pinching each other in a nothing corner. And then it's uh, ruined the race for uh, Nick Horn and uh, Raymond Rasmus Pedersen. <laughs> As uh, Senna is having to get creative with his oh, line. Oh, that's movement under breaking. Yeah. Senna top seven at the moment, but obviously it's top three you need for this one. I don't know for how long Banan's going to take this for. As you can see, not long. Oh, yeah. what's he doing there? I think he's a little bit frustrated with him. Uh, Senna moving a little bit under braking. What well, one? Well, Senna was braking on a, like, on a straight. No, like, like this. Oh, no. Nice. Yeah, this isn't the first time. <laughs> yeah, I think uh, Berlin's going to 
persuade him in a minute to move. Well, I, yeah, I don't think they're going to make it through. Oh, no, no, he's clear now, so they should be all right. Uh, Walker, the next to go. Yeah. Sen, who's already made contact with Horn at this corner earlier on. Doesn't make contact that time. He's now got Heritage, the next behind. Credit to Nick Horn, going back out on track. Rasmus Pedersen, though, uh, gone. Does not want to have any more of this race. Let's see. All right, some more replays. All right, race start. Oh, so we get to see what happened here. Uh, I assume it was just a lock-up. Cold tyres, demanding corner. Oh. So top, top three got through all right, and then, yeah, it's just a couple of cars near the back of the order. Unfortunately, got caught up. Oof. And that was the first slide. Was that Heritage or was oh. that Borton Turner? Must have been Borton and Turner. Yeah, I don't and know. Then that this... was Heritage rebounding into the track. Oh, he lost the rear. Okay, so he was on the grass, lost the rear, and then somehow, <laughs> I don't quite get the physics of that. Rebounds. Oh. oh, no. I thought it was an unrelated incident, actually, Lewitson, but. That was not a clean move. And this was the walk on that point. Yikes. Oh, and that's how Nick Horn got into P3. This is Dimbelow Pedersen. Let's see. I think Dimbelow overreacts on this right hand. Oh, bit of contact there. Oh, that's Dimbelow's fault. Well, if he had control of the car. I think he did. All right, so this is the aftermath. Let's see. Mm, maybe. Yeah, no, I agree. Dimbelow's coming over to the left, but I don't know if he had can because he had to fly across the grass. So it's really hard to judge without you know going through all the angles. Um, because yeah, yeah, yeah. The the, the guy not leaving Dimbelow space and and giving him that slight nudge, all of that's fine. But the problem is it meant Dimbelow went careering across the grass and yeah, passenger by the looks of it. I mean, it's been a nice BOP on below because he's not much faster than Van Horn now and I think this is going to be a really tight fight. Let us know in chat who you think is going to finish in P3, Van Horn or Dimbolo because Dimbolo is catching but by seven tenths of a second which isn't as much of a pace advantage as he had earlier on. He'll be with him in a couple of laps but we'll only have a couple of laps to pull off the overtake so I, I honestly think this is like a maybe a 60-40 in favour of Dimbolo now at this point. But that damage is not helping him. No, it is not. Let's see if Robert can hold it together. That's been his season's curse, is just holding what he has together. Do you recall him getting into an A final so far this season? We've only had no two of this format, but no. I think he's reached the A final. He was leading the B final at one point. Bremen's looking good. Eight tenths out in the lead. Then obviously that whopping gap back to Van Horn. And because the top two are teammates, similarly Sweden eSports, they will get all their drivers through. You don't like this. score points for this round, right? Uh, if you finish in fourth down to 14th, you do score points. Oh, because, of course, yeah, sorry, of course, because this is it for you. This is the, this just gets basically added to the results of the final. You get added to the bottom. Exactly. Right, exactly. of course. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Oh. oh, no. Let's see that livery again. Yeah, it's lovely. I mean, should move under braking less, but I love, <laughs> love the livery. Yeah, yeah that's I'd... what he's doing. Look at my livery, guys. <laughs> move to the left on the braking. Oh, this is close. Dimblow's on him now. He must have made a mistake, Van Horn. And this could be the chance. Dimblow the long way round. The bit of netco contact. And Van Horn survives the first attack. It's still a Dutch 1-2-3. Dimblow is a very impressive driver. I've been racing him all week at Monza in the wet. Um, he has... Definite 5 6k blood in him, 100%. Very, uh, oh, he's going to have to cover this one off. He's just about covered it off. I thought I wasn't sure if he was going to. And if he keeps on doing this, it will be very tricky for Dimblo to get round, especially with his lack of straight line speed. Yeah, let's see. Stay, stay, stay to the side. Don't open it up. Oh, he's got plenty of room. Two. Three more laps to go. That might be that might be important. We're just going to get three more laps in. Let's see. 
It's very nice. Robert should have a good exit here. But Dimbolo is fast. There's like two seconds behind him. As like is up seven places from his very start. He should not have been starting so far, so far down as he was. And uh, he will be catching these guys pretty quick. He was, uh, he only matched them last time out. But he, he's keeping them honest at least. Nicely done there, the, the, the chicane for Robert. Yeah, he just out of chicanes, doesn't matter on the way in. Doesn't matter, sure. just be fast on the way out, that's it. Doesn't matter how slow you go on the way in. Can't be passed. So just hook up your line, focus on your exit. Not that, because you can be. Oh, lucky Dimbolo cooked it, uh, overcooked it as well, because Robert was going to be very slow off there. He, he's a couple of mistakes there from Dimbolo. He took too much curb through the right. This is the sector Dimbolo's really strong. Robert's looking good. Two laps to go. This won't be white flag. No. Uh, no two laps to go. Two laps to go. And that lap was fairly simple for Van Horn. And Dimbolo looking like he might be the only pro driver not to make it through into the A final tonight if it ends like this. Should have really gotten through his heat. Can't actually remember what happened to him in his heat, honestly, Dimbolo. Uh, there was an incident. Um, da -da -da -da. I'm trying to remember. Oh, he started from the pits. That was it. That's the incident. Yeah. Didn't take the grid for some reason. Didn't have a qualifying ban or anything, but did not take to the grid. <gasps> Don't. <laughs> <laughs> oh, no. That's Borton Turner versus Luritsen. And that is Borton Turner dropping into the clutches of Luritsen. Borton Faster was the Norwegian. Apologies, the, the Danish driver. My apologies, last time out. Yeah, Mads is looking fast around here. So he's still Bremer leading the way. Fourth and second. And Van oh. Horn, he's not far clear. And he's overheating those tyres. It's going to make this left hander tricky. And he and that's a bit too much grass there for Dimbolo. He's struggling to follow right now. Maybe covering a ghost there was Van Horn. Yeah, but he's he sort of got to now at this point. He's only got a, a lap and a corner to go. Yeah, but all those ghosts were overheated tyres. <laughs> Robert's doing everything oh, he needs to that's do. That's a bit of a nothing move there from Dimbolo, although it does get him slightly offline. Ah, nothing on the exit, and then of course that aero damage he's got is going to really harm any chance he's got of overtaking on the straights. But here he goes, he's launching it, and Horn not off putts. Yeah, that's it. That's what Dimbolo's doing really, really well right now. He is all up in Robert's head. Even those little nudges on the way in, it's just to be like, hello, hello. <laughs> <laughs> Look in your mirror. <laughs> Panic. Because, uh, uh, yeah, Dimbolo knows. Robert knows how to defend every corner. So Dimbolo needs to get him offline. I do like this rear camera view. Can he get through the chicane? If he's going to make a mistake, he's probably going to be here. Oh, Aggressive driving there from Dimbolo. That's gained him a few metres. And he's going to have to cover this off as Van Horn. You can already see he's going to the middle of the circuit. And he does enough. Slow entry. Fast exit if he can possibly muster it. Yeah. Oh, my God. This is going to be tight. <laughs> <laughs> this is as close as Dimbler's got. A little bit of a slide there for Van Horn. He's immediately going to cover off the move. But it's so tricky to go on the outside at the hairpin. And yeah. Van Horn is still holding on. They've got one more corner to go. And this one is one that you can go on the outside depending on how generous the driver on the inside is. He's going to go for the cutback. Has he got the inside line, Dimbolo? I think he's going to do it right at the close. They make contact with oh. one another. Neither of them make the corner. Now they've got to try to keep on going. It is a 1-2 for Simray Sweden, but who's going to finish third? Will it be Veselek picking up the pieces? What slowdowns do oh these drivers have to serve? God. Here comes Veselek <laughs> to the line. Van Horn got through <laughs> if, if he served slow the slowdown. Veselek somehow was ahead of Dimbolo, but we need to wait for the final standings, which should come through in 20 seconds or so, for us to know who was in the A final. I mean, and like, I... That looked over aggressive from Robert. That looked like a panic from Robert, where he was like, I've been done, where the cutback had come from Dimbolo, and then he 
you know, try to cover it off at the last moment and they made contact and neither made the corner. That was my interpretation. Here's yeah, the it, results. He served it. He served it. He's three. Yeah, he did. Yeah, um, yeah. obviously Robert was pinching tight on the inside. Dimbolo had got the the left, right? That was the right around. Robert was on the right. Dimbolo was on the left. Yes. Yeah. Well, he made it stick. <laughs> Gets through to the A final. Uh, let's have a look at those results uh, once again and uh, yeah, see what the uh, final results then from the B final was. Bremer up ahead of Forsen, of course, the teammates. Nice uh, coordination between the two of them at the end. Uh, Van Horn, Veselek does finish in fourth place. He'll be annoyed that he wasn't that little bit closer. P hundreds, brilliant slowdown from Van Horn. I mean, it's a skill in itself to serve a slowdown and he's mastered that skin skill. Uh, Christensen in sixth. It was Benand Walker. What could have been for Walker? Uh, frustrating day for him. He had good pace. Heritage, Broughton Turner, Luritz and Senna, Horn, and Rasmus Pedersen, the one retiree from that B final. Um, yeah, that was an ending. I don't know if we can get a. We haven't got time for a replay, have we? Yeah, yeah, we've got time. Oh, oh, here we go. Robert, stick around. <laughs> Let's see. So by that angle, it looks like it's a fairly consistent line, I'd say, for Dimbolo. But Yeah, but does Robert have to open it up? I don't know. That was late. Yes, you're right. Robert pinches the corner. But was he alongside? That's my question. Like, you have to earn the right not for me not to turn, right? But I think he was alongside. Definitely. I, I'm not sure. I mean, that's why we have stewards, right? Yeah. So they can be that one. Yeah. Yeah, uh, yeah we could see the same angle again. Let's see if we uh, see what the... Um, if he was uh, more alongside. Oh, maybe he's not alongside. See, it's, it's not but even then, on the... if he did move across... Yeah. Is he allowed to do that when they're... If it's your corner. You know what I mean? you're not allowed to block. No, no, I agree, I agree. Not, what, you're not blocking if you're turning, right? You're turning for your no, apex, you you're, earn. You're not turning for the apex if you turn... 50 meters before the corner. Yeah, we'll see. It was it was late, and they were both aggressive for yeah, sure. I, 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 I mean, Dim, I mean, Dimblo would have never, in 10 universes, got stopped to make the inside of that chicane, and Robert was turning in with a guy uh, breaking down on his inside. I'm going to see if there's already been a protest submitted um, because <laughs> oh, I'm not I'm not logged in, so I can't do it. But um, yeah, I imagine already Dimblo is uh, into. Uh, <laughs> into the, the the form and um uh yeah see you on that one but yeah what drama to end the to join the race one crazy corner. race yeah crazy race um and uh, i mean hopefully this b final is, oh this a final apologies is going to be crazy as well we are already um and uh yeah just a quick shout out as well to racing unleashed because we are broadcasting and organizing as well the racing unleashed challengers uh this season and uh you can sign up over apexracingleague.com if you fancy driving gt4s at watkins Glen. if you're above 6k i rating go to apexracingleague.com sign up for that and uh, you can have a lot of fun and of course sign up as well for the challenger league because we've got way more challenges coming up for the rest of the year uh, which should be a lot of fun to take part in. Philip Hammer on pole position, then ahead of Pedersen, Lane, Destras, uh, Shea, Parker, Pedersen, Mayenborg, Kirsten, Spiedelak, and I'll let the rest of the grid go through for you because we're not going to have long before the start of this race. We've got just got Shea to get onto the grid, and he is now on the grid. So we are getting ready for this A final, and Philip Hammer going for three meeting victories in a row. Five lights are on. And away we launch for the last time here at Zorda. Again, it's a decent start for the P2 man, but Hammer has it all covered with that inside line. Some aggressive driving in the background. So you will make a beeline for the apex at turn one. There is a spin around already, and it's Parker, Shea, and Lane all being involved in these early stages. Top two managed to get through it cleanly, but many of our other front runners got through in uh, in a bad way. Uh, Nick Kirsten is now leader of the Amateur Jazz. He's up to fourth overall. Yeah, crazy start, let's see. Still lots of two wides to be decided out there. <clears throat> and a little bit of a slow wow, exit as well for Pedersen. Pedersen's dropping to the back. Awful start for Ben Pedersen. 
After looking like he might win the whole meeting, he's uh, right at the back now, and Someone's more gone drivers on. going off. That was uh, Edwin Forsland, his teammate going very well up in P4, but him not quite so much, one of the drivers he got through from the B final. Yeah, this is a competitive front, uh, a competitive front three. I can't get the words out. Very competitive. Yeah, Hammer did what he needs to do at the start again. Pedersen, who may have even been the driver who got past him back at VIR in the early stages, wasn't able to hold on to it. Looking to get past. But great start for Kirsten's up five. Lazarus up five. Bremer up six. Bremer got through from the B final. And he's now in the top half of the A final. Yeah, crazy. Hammer looking nice and confident. And hopefully everyone's avoided too much damage. I know Lane is 15 seconds off the lead. Or was, I think, something happened to... Oh, Pedersen. Pedersen did have too much damage. So it wasn't a slowdown that Pedersen was serving. It was damage. And he yeah. wasn't one of the drivers who spun, honestly. But he must have had a big odd hit. And uh, he will probably finish this race last. Uh, Nick Horn in chat. Yeah. Sorry to see, mate. That was, uh, yeah. Just wrong place, wrong time. T Grace's stop, hammer time. <laughs> in chat. That's all that needs to be said. He's correct. It's been uh, hammer time all day. I'm going to make my profile picture. I've decided uh, it's my own idea. I'm going to make it black and white. And uh, yeah, like flatten the skin tones. And it's going to be of Philip Hammer. Of Philip well. Hammer, yeah. <laughs> uh, Pedalac. <laughs> Being or getting past, but he's not going to make the corner, and that's going to lose him a couple of places because slowdowns on lap two, not as bad as slowdowns on lap one, but they're still pretty bad. Seems to be serving it. There you go. That was Pretty very wide. gentlemanly of him. I, I thought he was just serving it, serving it, serving it on the apexes, but no, that was very nice of him. That Nurburgring in livery, I've seen it in officials this week. Yeah. I had a really good battle. I didn't recognize them from the league, but. Yeah, one of their guys was uh, really strong. Yeah, I really like the livery. I mean, good luck if they make it to eSport, eSport level with all them words and track pictures that you don't know. But, you know, it's tough out there. <laughs> <laughs> Where is the Philip Hammer camera? Can we get it on before the end? <laughs> I think it's mainly down to Philip on, uh, on that one. I don't know why you're, why you're complaining. Um... It's something from a, a, a noir film, is uh, Philip Hammer. Um, but there he is, caught to a second clear of Nikolai Pedersen. Still distressed close. Kirsten's in for a huge point score. Oh, that's going to be close to contact. Come on, guys. We got through all right. This is Impulse Racing versus Delta Sport, so no team affiliations. And Scuderia Volpi in third. Oh, Shea's got past Mayenborg. And Bremer, oh no, Bremer's had a bad couple of corners, I think. Feedlag's not had a great couple of corners either, and no. Yes. And that's Van Horn. And someone else lost it. Portland. And all of a sudden, Lane's not last. Luke's won the next to lose a position, potentially, to James Parker. Parker down four places from where he started, but he seems to have a decently clean car. Um, I say that, I think the front is a bit bent in, but it's not losing him an opportunity to get past Luke's one at least, and he is up into P10. Yeah, the Straz is um, seven tenths back of Pedersen. Nick Kirsten's is the big gap, so the top three have got this locked out at the moment. Uh, Lazarus very close to Kirsten's. Van Horn into the pit, so he might have a good bounce with Pedersen for 14th place. Yeah, here's the livery. That Nurberg, I forget the team name, but basically, yeah. Nurberg Green Esports. Yeah. yeah. I like the livery. I mean, it's orange and it has a picture of the Nurberg Ring, so I'm a fan. Do you like it when uh, people in their normal person cars have uh, uh, an outline of the Nurberg Ring on the back of their car, like as a sticker? If. They've done the Nurburgring in that car, yes. It's absolutely sure. fine. And they if have to have done the Nurburgring in, yes. in that specific car. Correct. Sure. Otherwise, yeah. you know, it'd be like owning a Porsche Tag Heuer watch and not competing in the event. It's just weird, right? Yeah, sure. Yeah, yeah. exactly. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, you get me. 
Yeah, a bit of an odd one, that. <laughs> wouldn't want to be that guy. Well, wouldn't want no one. No. <laughs> Oh, look, we've got a move from Fidlak here. I mean, Fidlak have to defend here. And he just gives that up. Not yeah, well, that was Fidlak moving past. Uh, he's past oh, Mind Ball. Sorry. That was Mind Ball defending. the seventh place of our German drivers <laughs> fighting against one another. Uh, also, earlier on this lap, Lazarus got past Kirsten. So Lazarus now up to P4. Good night, actually, for Lazarus. After me uh, criticizing him in qualifying. Yep. Um, Teague's obviously here cheering for Robert. Teague, you're going to have to go watch the end of the B final. 100%. The, the last last corner. Last corner, yeah. Last it's not corner. tricky to find. Yeah, not tricky to find. <clears throat> okay, exactly, Glenn. <laughs> <laughs> um, I, I don't want to mention it, though, so I tried not to bring it up. No. no. I mean, you've gone an entire what? Uh, half a broadcast without mentioning it. Well, so. a tenth of a broadcast. Yeah, so well done on that. Thank one. you. Uh, yeah. And of course, you know how long it's been into the broadcast because of that watch. You can <laughs> see what time it is and <laughs> you can set a stopwatch. I imagine that's a function Correct. on it. So, yeah. yep. Here's some replays from the start. Pedersen actually had a good start. Really well, at least he was moving around and then it went awfully. Yeah. Oh, so, so Lani lost Lani it all by herself, and then you see Parker go yeah. wide. And then it was a separate instant then for Pedersen, because Pedersen yeah. gets through this one all right, but then it's the Ooh. second one. He gets hit a bit hit there. Yeah, yeah. Lani just cold tires, trying to over slow on the inside. Oh, and this is the slowdown we saw. He served this really well. He then took the two corners and got offline. So this is Bremer. And is this what happens to Van Horn, or is that... Oh, Mayberg. Um, yeah, that's tough. Oh, Oof. Man. Oof. Oh. oh, man. <laughs> right, this is on board with Swan. Have to get pulverized here. Oh, oh, front and rear. Oh, oh, yeah, car's in trouble when that happens. This was nice from Feedlack. Very nicely controlled. Yeah, very nicely controlled. There's now 1.4 seconds off the lead. He's dropped back a fair amount. He lost half a second on that last lap. I don't think it was even that bad a lap to be fair. Hammer's just put the hammer down and uh, is pulling away. That's the lead. Yeah, looking good. So this is just, uh, yeah, this is just a four point system like if it was a regular race, right? Yeah, 80 points for the race win. I think it's 73 the second. Gotcha. So you can get 130 points across the evening if you uh, win both races. No bonus points or anything like that because uh, it just makes it tricky for us commentators to calculate the stuff on the, on the go. Yeah, That's no, genuinely the reason. You like to eat your pizza when you're leaving, not update point sheets. Well, yeah, yeah. yeah. But, I mean, it's really annoying when, like, we, uh, you know, I like to follow the, the, the scores when it comes to the last round. And when you've got, you know, fastest lap to consider, I cannot be dealing with that. That's they figure out who's won the title. I get you. It's tough out there. Mm. Uh, amazing job from Kirsten, says. Has been, yep. Uh, he's being caught by Shea, but uh, three times past in that last lap. I'm, yeah, we'll, we'll, we'll see. I don't think Kirsten's going to fight this one as hard as he sometimes would do. We have to remember it's a longer race. This Is the A final actually longer than the B final as well, right? It's 18 minutes. Yeah. I'm going to say four minutes longer than the B final. And I... Yeah, math. You say maths. Maths, yeah, because I'm a, a proud, proud British person. I need to hide away from my heritage. Oh, see, I say math. Yeah. Because I left. Yank. <laughs> yank. I'm not a yank. <clears throat> um, Swan, I think, has just lost out to Parker. So Parker's now up to P10. So recovering well after going off into the gravel on that one. Oh, by the way, shout out to the title sponsor for this series, Apex Racing Academy. Uh, if you do want to get faster in the Porsche Cup car or any car on iRacing, do check out apexracingac.com. 
You get uh, tuition and setups and data packs from some of the best drivers in all of sim racing. So uh, do check out apexracingac.com in order to get yourself a bronze, silver or gold subscription, whatever works best for yourself. And uh, of course, we do also have uh, the late Apex coming up later on. David, uh, of course, can talk about how he did in Pesk last week. I don't like to talk about it. Well, you know. <laughs> I might mention it. Sure. Yeah, I'll well, bring we're talking about Pesk anyway, in terms of the pro guys. Yeah. So um, maybe you can. We might as well talk about the feature race, right? Yeah, sure. I'm sure Porsche wouldn't want me to word it like that, but the season's ended now. So. <laughs> I mean, what, what was the game bigger viewership during the season? Um, well, we're separated, aren't we? Pesco stars, we're fighting each other for views, whereas then we hand our views to Pesk and they're all in one place. So, <laughs> sure, yeah. it's a little bit hard to judge. But to answer you, all stars. Fast forward five years and the pros will be raiding us. Yeah. Yeah, <laughs> for the headliner, <laughs> for the quarter of a million. <clears throat> Uh, eight tenths of a second, the gap between Kirsten's and Shea. The Hammer's putting on, a, again, an, a stellar display, like last week. Obviously, last week was a little trickier uh, because he lost the position, then he got it back, and it was more just about maintenance, but this, not so much about maintenance, more about absolute domination. He's just chipping away a couple of tenths every lap and built himself a comfortable lead. And now he can start dialing in those chicanes and reducing the risk every lap. Straz, we know, is fast. Don't count him out for that P2. You know, they get a move done here as well. We've had a lot of drivers over the years in Apex Racing League um, win championships after missing the first round. Uh, Nick Madsen, I think, did it in the first ever season of this series. He missed the first round and uh, went on to win the championship. That was back when it was only six rounds long, uh, which was particularly impressive recently as well in the uh, Air 8 F4 Championship as well. I think we may have had the pro champion win after missing the first round. Yeah, v uh, VT Velen. Uh, but if Hammer won this season, he'd win the championship despite missing the first two rounds. And I, I don't think that has ever happened. So, yeah, long season. History is at stake. Yeah, long season. And um, I'm excited for the endurance format of Road America next week. So is it an hour long? Yes, with the pit stop. With the pit stop. Well, not necessarily if you absolutely oh, we limit the fuel to 60%. <laughs> okay, then they're definitely going to be stopping. <clears throat> so this is Shire looking at the back of Kirsten's. He's definitely got the pace to get this done. But it's just finding somewhere to get it done. It's difficult here. Yeah, we've got another three laps. Said with yeah, such three confidence. Laps. Three laps. Yeah, I think but so. only just like we're nearly making the f we're nearly making four more laps, but it'll just be three more laps. Hopefully, in this race, we don't see a repeat of last week where we see people pit in about well, now this lap. We had that last week where people were running the lower fuel. Yeah, someone someone did it, didn't they? Yeah. And sometimes we have drivers getting the 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 one X um, or the the seventeen instant limit. Oh, oh, that was close from Customs over that. Um, Slow down. Man, I, w I can't wait to race here again. We've got to wait a long time till the Jim Arena event comes around, right? <laughs> yeah, yeah, December. Oh. We might have to team up this time around. What do you think, Sam? What car, what car do you want to do it in? I don't, they change it every year, don't they? Oh, okay, sure. Because it's don't one, yeah. Oh, was but there a was that HPD then? Uh, no, I think it was GT1 was the fastest class for us. Uh, so we did HT, HP. Uh, Teague races in chat. Yeah, I did. Last one I did, I did him. Yeah, we, we can team up. I can, I can, uh, you know, I've, I've won uh, <laughs> the event already, so I, I don't really care at this point. Yeah, Sam's a previous winner. Well, the problem is you're <laughs> famous enough that people will give you penalties. If people aren't familiar with that, you pay to give people penalties. Yeah. So, which is a bit like ARL, to be fair. But um, <laughs> it's a bit more obvious when it comes to that event. Yeah. And uh, so, yeah, we will be absolutely hammered. I, I don't think it will happen. <laughs> Well, when I last did the event, I wasn't what you just said, quote, unquote, famous enough, because there was, yeah, Jardier, Jim, I like all these big names, and this was two and a half years ago, so. Sure. 
David yeah. who? David who? Yeah, exactly. David Cameron. David Cam is that? Yeah. <laughs> uh, <laughs> Nick Kirsten's might lose this position now because Shea is right with him and he's not going to fight it too hard. No. Enough pressure put on by Shea and Kirsten's with a very good result coming his way. He didn't cool. need to fight that one. He's pushing it with the uh, slowdown there. Though, is Shea, but he's uh, got away with it. T confirming it was HPD Mustang and the CTSV. I'd like to drive the CTSV. That thing is a weapon on yeah. the streets. That beach is like 170 miles an hour, I think. It's insane, that car. I might be busy that weekend then. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Fidelac not far behind these drivers now. He is catching them. It was actually seven tenths fast on that last lap, but we've only got one more lap to go, so I don't think it's going to quite happen. Really close to making, we're eight seconds short of making the extra lap, but yeah, we are just going to fall short of it. And Parker will be disappointed with that one because he can see Mayenborg up ahead of him and he can see Bremo up ahead of him. Really good drive this from uh, James Parker, considering his early setback. He's had really good pace, definitely could have been in the fight for top five uh, if he didn't have that instant, but uh, he's uh, kept his head up. Yep, could still get P9. So I'd see Robert at the back there. Obviously, uh, one too many touch too many times in the first couple of laps there. Yeah, really strong drive drive from Parker. Don't rule him out there. I think he can get Bremo. Very nice looking livery again. It's hammer time, as Teague said. Three and a half seconds. He is enjoying this track. But you just know, you know we're going to hear it. This is his first time at the track. Sure. <laughs> it pains me. No, I, I think Hammer's got decent experience in iRacing. Uh, us us old, old timers. Um, <laughs> we've, we had to drive this track a lot. And, uh, well, Philip Hammer will be uh, delighted with how today's gone. He won the one and only race at Real Atlanta. He won both races at VAR. And he's going to win both races here at Zolder as well. And with 3.7 seconds, it is Philip Hammer for Impulse Racing who takes the fifth round of the Apex Racing Academy Porsche Cup. Nikolai Pedersen with good points in P2. Destraz another strong result up in third. Lazarus up seven places in the A final to finish in fourth. And Nick Kirstens easily top of the amateur drives and really punches his uh, ticket as maybe a contender for the AM Championship this season. Yeah, great result from him. Um, because who's the other Am? Just really quick. Uh, Pedersen. Pedersen, yeah. So getting maximum points is uh, always good. And obviously how the points work in Am, you have to remember, he's he's outscored his nearest competitor by a chunk of change in that last range. Mm. I think it was oh, like 10, like 10, eight, places, yeah, 10 positions. So massive points. Yeah, yeah. Really good job from him there. And um, yeah, we'll be really, really help him in the championship. Still got another seven rounds of the season to go um, so uh, plenty more opportunity for it to uh, switch from now to the end um, but I uh, think we might be able to get you the final results now up on screen um, but uh, yeah we will just have to wait for the session for a little bit I think now we do have it uh, available and there they are I'm uh, up at the top well by Pedersen, Distress, Lazarus, Shea, uh, Kirsten's and then uh, yes, yeah, um, uh, what six, nine, eight positions between him and uh, Pedersen in yeah. this, in uh, the amps. I uh, feel like Meinborg, Bremer, Parker in tenth place. Frustrating him. Swan, Orsland, Lane, Pedersen, and Van Horn. Nick Kirsten, chat. Let's go. Yeah, GG's mate. What a result. What a result. Mm. Yeah, Very impressive really points. Job. That's a big points haul. And he's been knocking on the door as well, Nick. I think he had a really good qualifying pack at uh, Red Atlanta, but it went wrong for him in the early stages. Uh, so he's really been, um, yeah, uh, having a danger on that. Uh, I want to have a chat with uh, Nick Horn, our first interviewee. Uh, Nick, um, I was getting really excited. I don't think I've ever been more excited. Uh, I was going <laughs> to say in the commentary box, but ever, frankly, when you were in the advancing places twice. Um, unfortunately, I cursed you the first time. Um, talk us through that heat to begin with and, and your incredible race start. Uh, so, yeah, the, the, the B funnel, um, 
was going really well. Um, uh, and I got up to third by avoiding a few accidents. And then I got a slow down and I was back down to sixth. And I was like, I was quite annoyed. But I had pace and I thought, well, I'm just going to stick with these guys. I might be able to pick up a couple of places at the end. Yeah, and then I can't remember who it was. I think it was um, Rasmus had an accident in front of me. Uh, and I tried to avoid it, but there's not much width there. And it just clipped the front of the car and it literally ripped my passenger side wheel off. Uh, and that, that was it. Race over. So so from from the highs of thinking I might make it through to the A final to the lows of finishing last in a space of about 150 metres. Yeah, yeah, that was disappointing. I mean, we saw the onboard. It looked like he pretty much had no chance at getting through on the left. It was a closing gap and uh, was just very unfortunate. Uh, but how did you find Zolder? I mean, uh, it, it's a challenging circuit we've been saying throughout. Uh, was it a fun challenge for yourself? Yeah, it's uh, like I said, I hadn't done a huge amount of practice until this evening. I'm, I do vaguely remember racing it once before. Um, but by the end, I was getting really into it. Um, there was um, it had a really good flow to it. Um, yeah, and I was really getting into it. Um. And next up, we head to Road America. We've got the hour-long format. Am I right in thinking that you're more of a fan of the heats than the longer races? Uh, I think I think as someone who drives round not not at the the sharp end, I think the heat format uh, allows you the opportunity to end up in more exciting places throughout the evening, whereas the endurance format tends to leave you kind of more more at the back. Um, but um, yeah, I'm looking forward to. It. I actually like Road America. I'm doing the Road America 500 tomorrow, so um, yep. that's a bit of practice, albeit in the wrong car. What car are you driving in the uh, 500? The Nissan, because all of the flames and the boost whistle and everything. It's the best well, car to me. If if only ten people sign up, then uh, maybe you and David will be in the same split. So, yeah. uh, <laughs> I uh, find that okay. unlikely, but yeah, who knows? Stranger things have happened. <laughs> well, best of luck. Yeah, good for luck, mate. That one, um, and of course, best of luck for next week as well. Is there anyone you'd like to give a shout out to? Uh, same as usual, you guys, my Discord uh, chums, and also. Big shout out to Michael uh, on the um, Apex training. I didn't get to make it this week due to being away with work, but he always um, puts up with me being terrible and giving me pointers. So uh, he, he suffers idiots gladly, and we, we really appreciate it. Well, thank you very much for joining us. And, uh, yeah, we'll see you back next week. We'll see you later on. Cheers, chaps. Cheers, mate. Good luck tomorrow. Cheers. You too. And, of course, uh, yeah, Nick referring there to Michael Yanni pesk driver and of course uh coach at apex racing academy and uh yeah on every I think it's wednesday night does a um a group coaching session and people like nick and many many others and they usually have a group of about 15 of them jump in and uh, michael tells them how to drive and michael is well, at least from what i've heard probably the the coach that people compliment most because he's very very good at explaining how to get fast in the sim um who would you like to check up um, I think Nick needs bringing up next uh, with his awesome result. You right to do it? Yes. Uh, hello, Nick. Can you hear me? Okay. Yeah. yeah. GG's yeah, mate. Uh, that must have been uh, quite some result for you in that uh, A final there. Talk me through it. Yeah. Yeah, it's finally, mate. Um, I just had a okay start, and then it was just all luck into T1, not get collected by uh, the crash that happened right in front of me. And uh, then it was just smooth sailing to the finish line. Um, thought I didn't have enough liters of fuel in my car, so I was fuel saving at the end. Then I got the white flag one lap before I thought I'd get the white flag, so I started pushing again. And uh, well, it yeah, like... it worked out. Yeah, it's brilliant, because we was just working out your nearest uh, AM finisher was, was it eight or nine positions? Eight, yeah, eight some, positions. something like that. Yeah, that's mega, because that's how you do it in AM, right? You've got to quality. Yep. If you can quality well and finish well, you can build up such a point differential. But yeah, brilliant stuff. How did you find the track? Is it your first time here, or do you have experience at the track? It's not my first time here. I've driven it in the TCRs and GT3s as well. Um, but in Porsche Cup, it's definitely a bit uh, diff more difficult to drive, since uh, no traction control, no ABS. Um, especially that first chicane is just death if you, if you don't do it correctly. Um, but it's very fun, very fun battles, and very close racing overall. So it's a good, yeah. good track. It made our commentary easy because yeah, it was very tight, very close, and obviously the short races meant you guys were always on top of each other, providing uh, non-stop content. Um, yep. So I'm going to get Sam to do his quick math to see where 
years in the ham championship. Oh, no, I can't do it. Uh, no. you, you can guess, can't you? A smart man. Oh, I, oh, yeah. I could lie, but just say it convincingly. Yeah, um, come on, yeah. do it. Uh, so yeah, you're currently thirty-four points off the amateur championship lead. So um, yeah. So, oh, there you go. You had it. That's a good result. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. No, yeah, I think you've uh, really chunk of points. Are you looking forward to Road America? Good track for yours? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I love Road week? America as well. I love Road Atlanta, yeah. Road America, all fun tracks. So, uh... Well said, I completely agree. Um, yeah, so good luck next week. Um, are you doing the Road America 500 tomorrow? Nope. Nope, you should. Nope. Just wake up, do it. <laughs> I've got schoolwork to do, mate. <laughs> no. <laughs> do it in the pits. <laughs> all right, wait, it, anyone, yeah. <laughs> anyone would like to give a shout out to? Uh, my team manager Don Peoples for uh, providing this chance to race in this championship I guess um, amazing manager uh, and I like him a lot so uh, thanks Don <laughs> good job Nick <laughs> alright I'll see you uh, next week cheers yep cheers thanks Bye. there we go a very pleased Nick a very pleased Nick it's good to see let's next up <laughs> Let's just grab up Robert, shall we? Uh, I am sort of stealing this one from yourself, but uh, Robert, <laughs> welcome. Uh, well, what a fun race, eh? Uh, ent or entertaining race for us, because thank you for that B final, because we were watching that one very closely for the last three laps. Uh, talk us through the last corner instant. Uh, it was very tense, and uh, once I looked at the standings, I was on P3. And uh, yeah, I wanted to do whatever defending I had to do to stay on P3. And uh, yeah, the 5k driver behind me came closer and closer. And I was just trying to uh, keep the inside line everywhere I could. And uh, yeah, it worked out. But uh, yeah, the last, the last corner was a bit tense. It certainly was. Talk us through the serving of the slowdown, because I don't know how you... Uh, did you serve it right before the line? Or like how close was it? Because you, you got that position by like 400 or something. To be honest, I just uh, uh, got myself as soon as possible out of, out of the grind. And uh, I just went full send to the finish line. Uh, not knowing what to accept, but uh, yeah, it was still P3, so I was really happy. Absolutely. And then talk us through the A final. We're actually just seeing a replay of the instant. It was it was a disappointing one because I mean you you got off to a really good start on that one. You were up, I think maybe into top ten. I want to say, um, and then yeah, just got a bit messy down at the at the chicane. Yeah, I had, a, I had a good start and I could avoid all the carnage, uh, w w what happened in front. And then I think it was Sasha, but I'm not sure what happened, but uh, he was a bit slower. So I took the outside or the inside line uh, to overtake him. And um, yeah, uh, I, I had to turn in for the chicane and I think... He was too late on his brakes and he took me out, so that was a bit disappointing. But uh, yeah, I was happy I made it to the A finals for the first time. Absolutely. And uh, yeah, you should definitely be uh, pleased with that one. And um, yeah, I'm sure it will be the first of many to come. Well, thanks for coming and having a chat with us, Robert. Is there anyone you want to give a shout out to? Uh, yeah, the team boss, of course, David from <laughs> Legend. <laughs> <laughs> I cannot, cannot leave without saying that, but uh, yeah, he's always uh, uh, giving good words and tips. So, uh, yeah, uh, shout out to David and to you, and uh, hopefully to uh, to next good, good result, next race. Nice one. Well, thank you for yeah coming and having a chat. And um, best luck for uh, for next week. And are you doing Camel GT with uh, with David tomorrow? No, I'm doing it with Mark. Oh, okay. Yeah. Yeah, he's, dri he's driving with he's driving with Mark. I <laughs> I didn't have any time to practice this week, and I uh, won't be in the sim. Uh, maybe only on Sunday, but uh, I'm not 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 much in the sim uh, lately. But yeah, so we'll, we'll see. Bet uh, more, even more practice, hopefully for uh, for next Friday. So uh, yeah, best of luck for that one, Robert. Yeah, cheers, guys. 
Have a great Cheers, evening. Bye bye. Bye bye. Yeah. Uh, Robert Van Horn there. Who do you want to drag up next? Uh, Glyn's been waiting for, for, sure. for, for politely for ages. Let's bring him up. Uh, hello, Glyn. Can you hear me okay, mate? Hello. Hello. Thank you for waiting. Sorry, I think Sam took a Robert to to make sure I didn't interview Robert. It was a it was a clever move from him. Uh, I'm impressed because I would have done it to him. So I respect that. Yes. Respect that. Um, Zolder, how did you find it? Um, not too bad. Off track in most of my quali laps probably didn't help to start with, but yeah, not too bad. Mm -hmm. Is it a track you've got experience at, or is this one of your first times here? Uh, I bought it this week. Yikes, so this is a very technical track, as you probably have experienced this off-track slowdowns. Yeah, I mean, the pros oh, of this of track, them. it's... Yeah, it's, there's a lot of time hidden on this track with the flow of it all, and as you probably experience, putting it all together is really tricky. And even the overtaking positions, there's a lot of places where people can get you offline, and it can really stress your tyres out or cause a slowdown. Um, it's a very technical track. Um, yeah, and like right, be, being one of on. the slower drivers as well, getting the, the quicker drivers coming back through when they've when they've messed up somewhere else is great fun. Yeah, for sure. Uh, Road America next week, is that a track you're fond of? Because you've got an hour-long race next week. Fond of it. An hour in the, in the Porsche Cup will be fun. <laughs> with tyres and... <laughs> yeah. I think it's a mega track. I think you just got to look after your tyres, look after your fuel, and um, yeah, I think it, Road America is going to make some, some great racing in um, Porsche Cup. Yeah, doing the um, uh, the 500 tomorrow, so that'll be a bit of track knowledge again. Sweet. Are you doing it with um, um, in the Nissan as well? Uh, doing it in the Audi. On oh, the Audi, the GTO. How do you find it? Yeah. I, I haven't driven that thing in a millennia. Uh, I bought that on Monday as well. <laughs> <laughs> Well, I haven't really practiced the Nissan when I'm racing that tomorrow. And that thing's. Have you driven the Nissan GTP? No, no, not yet. Yikes! You're going to experience it in traffic. This is actually, I would say, one of the hardest races for multi-class traffic there is on the platform, and you'll see why tomorrow. Well, cheers for the heads up now. Yeah, <laughs> you're welcome. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Well, thanks for having a chat with us. Does anyone like to give a shout out to? Um, just to Nick Horn and the rest of THR, really. Cheers for taking me on, and um, yeah, it's been good. Oh, and Michael Janney, he's awesome, and um, pretty much taught me everything I need to know about driving this car, and he's still teaching me, and he's great. Yeah, that's awesome. Oh, and obviously, again, I owe you a thank you. Thank you for the video link you sent me. It's still, it's oh, one of my... a volley song. That of the song, it was it, it, it made my day. So yeah, appreciado. That was a uh, mega. All right, mate. Uh, we'll talk soon, and good luck next week at Road America. Cheers, Dave. Cheers, up. Cheers, mate. Bye. Uh, I think, I mean, we've already sort of gone over over time, but I think we'll have one more because I did tell the drivers, hey, you can have a chat, whoever you are, <laughs> uh, and now everyone's joined, which is fantastic. It We'd is. rather have that because we might have to tell a couple of people you can't talk today but it's it's you know we'd rather have that than not having one to talk to so we're going to have a chat with uh alexander now um alexander congratulations um Thank fifth you. place tonight um you yeah. know you had a couple of setbacks as well but i mean you must be pleased with how that all turned out to be honest yeah i um yeah i choked a bit on the start again because it seems like uh, i i have a reputation of um messing up my starts every 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 weekend so that's uh that's nice uh but this time i was quite happy with the results of just being able to catch back to p5 again so that was um i was happy with my performance uh for this situation uh i don't think i had that much more pace in me to be able to fight for the podium like i did last week um i just wanted to get to the broadcast to uh, officially congratulate uh, Ilan for his performance on this because uh, he told me that it was his best track and he manages to finally get a podium there. So yeah, big uh, big shout out to to, the, to him because uh, he's usually a very fast driver and always has something that doesn't get get on well for him. So I was happy. I was happy for his performance there. Yeah, yeah, he, he's he's up to it in the last couple of rounds as uh, Ilan. So. Uh, yeah, that was good effort from him today. How have you found the circuit in the official series this week? Have you had much of a chance to race? 
Uh, well, I took a bit of a breaking uh, a break for uh, official racing for this uh, week because last week I did quite a bit of grinding in uh, and farming in uh, in Virginia. So I took a bit of a of a break for a moment, and I did like six hours of practice, but only practice uh, for the event. Um, and well, it it didn't pay that much as I thought it it would, to be honest. Uh, but yeah, I think it's gonna be one of my drop weeks in the standings. I don't know if I'm still. I was first after Virginia. I don't know if I will keep that first position. We'll see. But yeah, my aim is to. My aim was to do the best I could uh, for for the for the weekend, and I'm quite happy with that result. Yeah, absolutely. But I think you'll still be in the lead. So uh, yeah, I think uh, Salvatore was the closest one to you, and he didn't have a very good evening. So you should be sort of oh. safe at the uh, at the summit for that one. Um, well, thanks mm -hmm. for having a chat with us. Is there anyone, anyone you want to uh, give a give any thanks to? Uh, well, first of all, thanks to you, and thanks for the uh, organization of this league because it's always a pleasure to uh, to participate in the events. Uh, always have a, uh, having fun with um, different people. Uh, had the opportunity to fight against very, very good drivers like Nikolai, Philip, and Corey, and all the others, and Ilan again, and all the others in the in the league. Uh, and the interesting thing is uh, is that we can see the, the progression of everybody. Uh, like I can think of uh, Ben uh, Peterson, who who is technically an amateur driver, but like. It, it doesn't look like that, to be honest. He's just very good and very talented. And like, it, it's very cool to see that everybody puts uh, the efforts to try to do our, their best for the league. And we have we have very cool races, to be honest. I just, yeah, I'm just having a lot of fun. So thanks for that. Uh, and thanks for everybody in my team uh, for the support they give to me uh, at Mercury Setup Shop. So that's very nice for them, from them. Yeah. Awesome. Well, yeah, once again, thanks for coming up and having a chat with us, Alexander. Thank and um, yeah, we'll see you back uh, in seven days. Thank you. Yeah, good. Uh, see you next week. Hope with a better result. See ya. Bye bye. Bye. So that was our, I believe, still championship leader, Alexander yep. Shaye, um, with uh, good <clears throat> points today. Um, next week, we're in America. We've already chatted about it a little bit, but our long race. Uh, I guess it's going to be quite a bit of fuel saving on that. Um, yeah, let's see how the draft is, because these are a little bit better draft efficiency than GT3s. So if there's quite a lot of passing um, or there's heavy draft, we could see some some serious fuel saving. I'm not sure. The draft model in the GP Cup seems to be very sensitive to, I don't know. We've seen it in some circuits where it seems quite powerful. Sometimes we've been quite surprised. Um, but yeah, I think so. Looking after the tyres as well, I don't really know what the tyre strat will be. Porsche Cup's not really a car we talk about tyre strategies with because... You, you well, they definitely won't be changing tyres, but I don't know how much of a thing they'll have to pace themselves mm. in the first part of the race to make sure they get to the end. We'll make it 63 Celsius and make them sweat. Do it. Sure. Track state. Track temp 60... 63 Celsius. Celsius. Yeah. So, wow. Yeah, you turn it up. Yeah, hey. gosh. Let's, let's, let's see. I mean, yeah, don't want to be living in that. <laughs> uh, well, thank you, everyone, for tuning in. Of course, I remind that we've got the late Apex coming up in about 20 minutes' time. So that'll be, once again, on the Apex Racing TV uh, YouTube channel. Uh, we'll be discussing the worrying signs for Le Mans Ultimate, uh, Apex Racing Team's PESC results at the end of the season, and more silly rigs. Um, made by um, manufacturers who have too much time on their hands. So we'll be uh, yeah looking at all of that. So do tune in uh, to that, the late Apex. Um, we'll also be uh, just showing you a few highlights as well uh, of the race uh, as this stream finishes. And of course, make sure to subscribe to the channel, check out all the different uh, broadcasts that we have on Apex Racing TV. And um, yeah, hopefully uh, see you for the next week of the Apex Racing Academy Porsche Cup next time out. But for now, from myself, Sam Fitzpatrick, and from David Sampson, we will say goodbye, and we'll see you back in seven days' time at Road America. See you then. Ciao.